actually, today is actually a world premiere of a set of pieces that I wrote called Bagatelles. All right. Now, it's actually been performed. That's why we have to call this the West Coast premiere. This set of pieces was commissioned by Jerome Lowenthal, who's the head of piano uh, at Juilliard School. So he, I wrote it for him and for his uh, studio. And the first performance was at Paul Theater in Juilliard two years ago by his entire class. It was interesting since they were all on stage and they had four pianos and it was like, it was like watching Liberace, actually. It was kind of a show. And they went all around. And it was a fabulous performance, of course. But this is the first time I'm going to hear it as a concert piece as it was intended. So what is a bagatelle? First of all, it's a very beloved form of, of composition for a composer. A bagatelle actually comes from the Italian word bagata. I'm not Italian, even though I look Italian. And a bagata is something small. And the English, who have a way of translating everything to perfection, they translate it as a trifle, which I like very much because it renders it small and intimate and has a sense of something sweet about it, doesn't it? Like a dessert. So a bagatelle, whether it's for orchestra, though they're usually for a small instrument, violin, but very often for piano, where one person can play all the voices. So Beethoven wrote a set of bagatelles at the end of his life, not just fear release. That was very early, of course. That was an individual, what we call a, a, a fleeting piece or a fugitive piece. It didn't belong to anything. He just wrote a beautiful piece. But towards the end of his life, in the last year, he wrote a set of piano bagatelles. And they're small and intimate and varied, Complex. Uh, but there are other bagatelles. Um, the one that most people know is by Bartok. And Bartok wrote a set of bagatelles for a great legendary pianist of the 19th century named Busoni. My bagatelles are 14 in number, and I divide them into two groups. I call them twice seven haiku. Now, haiku is a small Japanese poem. There's an obvious reason for that, not only because my parents are from Japan, and therefore I'm Japanese-American, but also because bagatelles tend to be little poetic utterances. So what for me would be a poetic utterance that's small? It would be a haiku. Now, you all know what a haiku is? It's a Japanese poem that has 17 syllables arranged five, seven, five. So it's divided into two groups of seven. There's another reason why I chose that. We are in Los Angeles. I'm now a professor at UCLA. My great forebear, I'm not in his league at all, though I aspire to be, was Arnold Schoenberg, whose wonderful piece was called Pierre Lunaire. And they are 21 poems. And he entitled them Dreimal Sieben Gedichte, three times seven poems. So this is a sort of tribute to the tradition that I'm following in. Debussy, when he wrote his uh, preludes, which are kind of like bagatelles, he put the titles at the end. And so I did that too. The great English poet William Wordsworth said something like that. He said, poetry is great emotion recollected in tranquility. That's a real English idea, isn't it? And to me, this is my Wordsworthian statement. I am very, very blessed to have a terrific pianist. You know, we're always, we always want our music played by you. Because she makes me sound better than I am. And the name of the first one is called Like Falling Leaves. Now, we all have that great Earl Gardner song, you know, Autumn Leaves. And... Um, there's something about leaves falling that's a very romantic image for poets and for composers, like Schumann, Bunte Blitzer, or something like that. So I felt I could not begin my own piano piece without doing homage to the great pianists who preceded me, composers. Schumann is certainly one of my great models. next song is called A Drinking Song for Kittens. Now, obviously, I have a very special love for cats. And this image will run throughout. It's also based on a Japanese folk song.
in the countryside in Japan when it rains and then the rain goes away, like every place else it gets very hot in the nighttime and you see these sparkling <coughs> things flying around. But you don't just see them, you see the reflection of the little puddles of rain. Mm. So you see fireflies and you see sometimes the reflection, but not always because the puddle is not coextensive with the whole horizon. So you're going to hear cannons, that is to say a right, a line in the upper hand and part of it in the left hand. So that's the image. number five now is called Frankie and Annie and I'll tell you right now that's based on the theme song of the first movie I ever did called from death race 2000 so Okay, this is called Bonodori. Those of you who go to Japantown or something know that in the summer they have a little midsummer festival in which people dance. And this is reminiscent of that. You'll recognize the tune right away. You know, everybody who writes for the piano feels they have to write a fugue, just as Bach did in Wild Tempered Clavichord. Because of my training, I, I wrote a piece that I think is a beautiful fugue. The only thing it's not a fugue, it's really just a fugue subject. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Bagatelle number seven is the end of the first group of seven pieces. And so it has a little bit of a finality about it. I call it Hip Hop Farmer because it suggests something very contemporary. It has a vamp, which is hip hop. Bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, like that. But the tune itself skirts around and eventually quotes a little bit from Robert Schumann's Happy Farmer. Da 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 di da 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 di da da. Just hints at it. But everybody, who certainly every pianist, will catch it immediately. So you can see that the bagatelles for me are not only a, a joyful thing to watch and hopefully to listen to, but also is, is both tongue in cheek and playful. <laughs> Part two is seven songs, and it begins with a kind of homage to people that I love. They are, this is called homage aux trois bees, a homage to the three bees, who are Bach, Brahms, and Balcom. That's William Balcom. William Balcom and I grew up together in Seattle. He's now a Pulitzer Prize winner, he's written many, many wonderful things, and he's famous for having resurrected Scott Joplin and UB Blake. He actually found their music and started to play them back in the early 60s. And so you'll hear a little bit of that. So the music starts as Brahms and transmutes into this other style. piece after that is a ballad. It's kind of a, I call it ZW, which is German for Zigeunerweisen, which is Gypsy Airs.
Summer Nights. There's a piece by Prokofiev from his great opera, War and Peace. It isn't done very often. It's great music, but it's very, very expensive to do. And one of the great numbers is called Summer Nights. Thank you. That little quote at the end was a song that you all must have heard a hundred times. It's Sakura, it's a Japanese folk song. It even appears in Madame Butterfly in the second act. So I steal from the best. Yeah. Number 11 is a waltz, and I call it the waltz of the kittens, getting back to my waltz of the kittens, getting back to my uh, feline imagery. But of course, being a snob that I am, I give the title in French. After that is is quite challenging, I think, and it's called I think it's called Kleine Takata. The Kleine, the small Takata, and it really is an homage to Prokofiev, who is very famous and very difficult. Takata, everybody knows, All right? And this is a small version of it. Number 13 means a great deal to me because it's for my wife, Carol. And I give it the title that Beethoven would have. I call it Fear Carol. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is my favorite song in the set, of course. And Jerry recognized it too, Lowenthal, when I sent it to him. And he said, this is beautiful. I could not have felt more complimented.
that. And finally, the last movement is a reference to the first one so that we bookend the entire set. And just as the first one was called Falling Leaves, this one does not have a falling gesture, but a rising one, so that we're bookending the gestures of the two pieces. And this is called Like Rising Mist, just as leaves fall, mist rises. Okay?